and welcome to Fashion Exposed, Kate. Thank you. So you just gave a presentation today about um, key strategies for business success and you started in fashion design yourself. Uh, how did this prepare you for a career in business consulting? Uh, I, well, considering I'm consulting in fashion, it gave me the best possible education. Uh, having actually set up my own business from scratch, ran, ran almost every element of it myself, I think I have um, a really hands-on knowledge to bring to the role of a consultant. Uh, a lot of fashion designers will go to a straight-up business consultant and they just won't understand the nuances of the industry like someone who's been in it can. So it's been fantastic. I mean, it was a tough road to learn all those lessons, but now I feel the value and I'm, I've got so much to give to other designers to hope, you know, in the hope that they won't make the same mistakes that I did in the beginning. Because people might not understand that, you know, business consultancy is very different to fashion business consultancy. It sure is, yes. Because, you know, I work in a very holistic way. I, I think about the numbers, I think about the marketing and the business and the operations, but I also understand the importance of the creativity and the, uh, the, the actual the trends and all the things that come together when you're a fashion designer. It's, people are really passionate when they're in fashion, and I understand that. I understand that it isn't just about the numbers. Even if the numbers don't necessarily add up, you're still going to want to do it. So I just want to help you do it in the, in the smartest possible way. Because as a designer you're very creative and you're thinking about those looks and what fits the body and those kind of things yeah, and your exactly. mind isn't necessarily focused on business, is it? No, and I try to help um, those creatives understand that business can be really creative and it can be really, um, it can really arm you with so much strength when you're designing to know what you're capable of actually doing. If you've got, if you're not stressing about money and you're not stressing about who's going to pay you and you're actually freed up to be creative. So I try to help them streamline the business so that they can actually be more creative. So it's not something to be frightened of or avoid, it's something to really embrace and, and also ask for help, you know, I'm not saying that everyone should do everything, but, if you, can't, but you, you need to know the basics and you need to know when to ask for help. So as a, a new designer or someone setting up a business for themselves in fashion, mm. um, you know, business plan, is, is this extremely crucial and is it, it important to get it right first? It is. Look, I don't think it's important to get it right and I think that's the thing that people really get put off by. Just get it on out of your head and onto paper. Um, make sure your plans and your ideas are, are, are tumbling around your brain. Once you've got them on paper, and I, I mean I've worked with, business, with creatives who their business plan is a massive mind map done on a huge piece of butcher's paper with coloured pens. That's a business plan. You know, the numbers need to be nutted out, but your accountant can help you with that, or your bookkeeper, or maybe a family member gets it more than you do. But a business plan can be a huge, you know, it can be a huge visual creative process as well, and, and, you, and creative should look like that. Um, you also discussed omni-channel retailing today and the art of the seamless yeah. shopping experience. Um, you know, is this something, you work with a lot of Australian designers, is this something that we're getting onto or we're a little bit behind the eight ball? I think we're massively behind the eight ball on this one. I think, I mean, all of my designers are kind of tapping into various components. They've got an online store, they've got a, um, they've got a Facebook and a website, but n none of it, not very few of them are integrating them in a way that actually makes it work. It's more often more work than it is um, profit for them, so it's, it's, it's really new here. Big business is getting it, smaller businesses are not, and IT needs to catch up. It's very expensive to get the IT solutions that I even talked about in my talk today. Um, hopefully as those, as those um, technological advances happen, they'll get cheaper and we'll be able to Im implement that kind of software um, at a small business level. Um, you talked about connections today in the seminar and ways that people can engage and be creative and interact with their with, with people, getting mm. back to that basic. Um, why is this so important to sort of get out of behind the desk and engage again? I think it's just such a fundamental part of being a human is to connect. And I think we, um, we forget about it in fashion because the industry doesn't really encourage that kind of communication. Designers aren't talking to other designers. They're not sharing their problems and, and helping them each other through these situations. And often they're looking at the next guy thinking, wow, they're doing really well, when the other person actually is going through the same problem. So better, greater communication works at every level. And if you go through a problem, you know, even if it's in a friendship, you know, you communicate, you work it out. It's the same in business. You've got to communicate to work things out. And t business is tough at the moment, so get on the phone, get in, go in store, find out how your product's moving, talk to your staff, and 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 work as a team to solve the problems that you're facing. Because you used a couple of case studies today with Selfridges and mm -hmm. Chanel, mm -hmm. and these are quite big businesses. And you said, you know, even as a small business, you can still relate to them. And what are mm -hmm. some tips that we can take from them? And why is it so important to look over our shoulder all the time and see what our competitors are doing? Well, I mean, I think I chose those two um, case studies because of the fact that they've been around for 100 years. They've weathered far greater storms than what we're going through at the moment. And as I, I showed, you know, in the slide, that Selfridges was bombed during the, the Second World War, and they've gone through depressions and. Relative to our situation, they have they've triumphed, they've, they've um, overcome adversity and triumphed, 
and their businesses have grown and strengthened over time. So I think it's important to put things into perspective by looking at these bigger success stories and to look at how these old brands who could have just like stagnated or disappeared have innovated with the times. You know, they've, they've had a clear vision in the beginning. It might, might have taken some different roads and paths along the way, but they have always had those key components of success in their businesses. Great. Thank you, Kate. That's right.